Well, yes, that kind of leads into more like your like signal versus noise type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, can we dive into that a little bit? Because I know like Ant and I kind of use the concept, I guess in two ways. One way is when the system's too noisy because the injury's too acute. You can't get a good signal as to when your interventions are working. Then I guess the other way would be you don't want, like you're saying, you don't want to add too much noise because then your signal may not, or you may not know what caused that signal change kind of thing. If you put in too many inputs, you don't necessarily know what caused the change. So like, how yeah. do you kind of integrate this idea of signal versus noise and how does that guide your like intervention selections or how you modulate the variables? Well, I just try to simplify it so that the noise is like a base level of work that kind of keeps things supported, right? So it's not like, like there's probably noise and then there's noisy noise and noisy noise is like just too much shit, right? That you can't manage. But if noise is like a base level of aerobic work, a base level of strength endurance work, like, a, you know, very discrete qualities, then you're like, okay, I need this much noise in the system to keep everything functioning. Right. And then, then I start spiking things. Like then my signals come in. It's like, okay, this is a sprint workout here. This is a jump workout over here but I'm, I'm just working off that foundation of like general fitness, which is a noise quality in my opinion. Um, and if, if that, if I, if, if, if I, if I lose or if I neglect that, that base level of noise, then I'll have problems launching the signal off of it. I won't, I won't have as much to work with. So, um, but it, I think it does require that you simplify things like, you know, what, it, what is your base conditioning work and does it need to be fancy? What is your base strength work? You know, um, if somebody's really good at Olympic lifting, um, they have enough sort of, if they have a history of Olympic lifting, they have enough noise in that system for me to get fancy with that. I can do snatches, I can do cleans, I can do prep jerks, I can do all. So that makes it interesting. I, I can, I can produce a lot of signal off of that, but if somebody doesn't have that background in Olympic lifting, do I want to invest time to get them to that point or do I just move them to another activity that's going to get that signal response? Right. So, you know, my kids, I'm teaching them Olympic lifting because I think it's not a bad option to have, especially when it's shitty weather outside. Right. In terms of, you know, creating, you know, power and, and speed and velocity and all that. So we use it because I have, I have a platform and I have Alico weights and I have Alico bars and, Hey, we're going to go nuts with it. Right. But if I don't have that situation and I can't teach them, well, I'll probably go to like a, a explosive med ball throw and a jump based program and a sprint based program. Um, but you know, um, and then build volume with those qualities. So I, I, I'm always just thinking about what is the base foundational level of fitness I need in somebody before I can really start moving into some interesting areas in terms of advancing speed or strength or, Whereas like an endurance athlete, I would say their, their, their environment is, it's tremendously noisier, right? Because it has to be. Um, so you're, you're piling on more volume, but then even then most of the success I've had with endurance athletes is going like, okay, how can we kind of bring the noise down and shift you into some more signal related activities like elastic activities and and, and strength activities and speed activities. And then we've had better responses because we've, we've reduced the noise to a point where it's not creating chronic injury. And it, you know, maybe it reduces the cortisol levels in their system. And then we can start working on things that advance them mechanically um, by creating more elasticity and, you know, better neuromuscular responses. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So uh... it's, 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 it's something where I think you really have to kind of step back from it in an abstract way and start thinking about where everything fits in. And then you can zoom in a little more and tweak something and then you'd kind of come back again. And, but I think, you know, during COVID, like I'm really aware of not becoming too specific uh, because my kids are doing less activity now. So like the way their school system is, there there is some in-person, but like they're in semesters. So my son had... PE and some other course when usually they'd have PE throughout the year. Right. So now he did a lot of PE and now he has little. So I'm like getting him out and doing some more activity conditioning related stuff because 
if we don't, he's not going to have enough noise in the system for me to work on other things and he'll break down. So I'm, I'm very acutely aware of that right now because it's very easy to fall into that trap of just do ultra specific. Cause that, you know, um, so. That makes sense. Cause it's like, it's an easy thing to just point to this one, like it's this one quality we need to train. But like, if you take a step back to maybe missing like the general kind of noisy things they need to then express that quality. Yeah. And in, in the general population, like I would say in sports, there's not enough noise sometimes um, in their system, but there's a lot of like, well, what happens is they try to do ultra specific stuff and then it, they, they habituate and then they don't have enough signal because everything's the same. So you got to start separating things out for the pro sport athlete or the, the athlete where in the general population, there's so much noise and no signal right? Because it's chronic stress. Like, oh, my wife hates me. My kids hate me. I hate my job. My back hurts. Um, you know, all of these things, I, I can't sleep. And so the noise level so high that they're not doing anything that's signal related because they, they're just drowned out. So I think I start, you know, obviously we start looking at sleep monitoring. We start looking at, you know, are you stretching? Are you moving? Are you, you know, are you doing some base level of aerobic activity? And then we say, okay, well, now we got to do some strength you know, basic strength, like let's do a, uh, whatever trap bar deadlift. That seems to be an easy one now because it's, there's not a huge technical component, but you're loading somebody. Um, and then that's why I think the stim works very well is because it does introduce like a very profound stimulus that they're not experiencing in their life, acute stimulus where everything's chronic stress. Um, so so we'll go in there and we like turn it up like, Oh, right. Oh Yeah. How does your back feel? Like, I don't even feel my back, right? And their range of motion increases because you've introduced a signal. So, so philosophically, it, it works well if you start thinking of things that way and kind of pull yourself out and, and just, you know, be careful that sometimes if they do too much of something, it will become noise because it just dilutes everything. 